Well, last time, last time around, we wondered if you were able to determine, uh, you know, we could read graphically what uh, the diagnostic position x three quarters over z, x one quarter over z, what they are from this normalized uh, plot. Uh, the anomaly drops off to three quarters of its maximum value at a value of x over z approximately equal to 0.45 and to one quarter of its maximum value at about 1.25, x one quarter over z equal to 1.25. Uh, x three quarters, x one quarter, f one half, those are x one half, those are referred to as diagnostic positions. So, um, so we, we did this graphically. Uh, uh, again, we, we showed that um, x three quarters and x one quarter were approximately 0.45 and 1.25, but mathematically, as we did for x one half, uh, we are solving for this ratio, g v over g max, when it falls to three quarters of its maximum value, or g v over g max when it falls to one quarter of its maximum value. We're basically solving the shape term uh, for the value x over z. And uh, if you haven't done that, you know, you might want to take a minute to do that. Um, <clears throat> again, this is just the, uh, we're just looking at the vertical component over g max when its value is equal to three quarters or one half or one quarter or whatever you want it to be. Um, <clears throat> you know, and x of n in this case just refers to kind of an arbitrary uh, the, the position at an arbitrary ratio that you happen to be interested in, we're interested in this example, in the three quarters uh, g max position. So we're going to be solving the shape term for the value of x over z, which yields um, a value of uh, in the normalized uh, uh, plot of three quarters. So, what value of x over z, exact value, we've estimated it uh, just graphically. We know it's about 0.45. If we go through the calculations, <clears throat> again, we're, we're just setting this equal to 3 quarters and solving for x 3 quarters over z. We find that x 3 quarters over z is equal to 0 0.46, which, uh, you know, is supported by the graphical analysis that we did. So. Uh, you can kind of double check your math. So, just as we did with x one half, x three quarters can be used to estimate z. Uh, we know that x three quarters is equal to zero point four six z, and z then would be equal to two point one eight or one over point four six times x three quarters. So if you know what this distance is, just like we did with x one half, if we knew what x one half was, the depth index multiplier was 1.305, we could estimate z. Uh, we could also estimate z using the three quarters max location uh, or the one quarter max location. So we could get three different estimates of z. They should all be the same, same anomaly. Um, so if we do, you know, the, the same thing, solve more precisely rather than graphically for the x one quarter over z, we find that that's equal to 1.23, which is pretty close to our graphical estimate. And this gives us a z equal to 0 0.81 times x one quarter. Okay, the, the depth index multipliers, remember that we, we often has, have noise in our data. So this is just an example of a noisy data set. So what we've done here is we've taken multiple diagnostic positions. Uh, x three quarters, x two thirds, x one half, x one third, x one quarter. We Note that the anomaly falls off to these values. The, the value of x three quarters over z is equal to 0.46. We just went through that. 
the depth index multiplier is 2.17. So these are the depth index multipliers. We know if we take um, <clears throat> the values at, of x three quarters, two thirds, one half, one third, and so on, multiply them by the depth index multiplier, we get the the depth. So here we have five different diagnostic positions, five different depth index multipliers. From this anomaly, we can get five different estimates of z. So here I've just put a table together. We've got the depth index multipliers, and then our x three quarters, x two thirds, x one half, and so on are listed here. Remember, we're dealing with a noisy data set now, so these z's are not all the same, even if we have that noise-free data set, if you do it and I do it, we're probably going to come up with you know, slightly different estimates of z. Uh, even, even with a perfectly smooth curve with no noise. Uh, but here we, we see that we get 477 for x3 quarters, we go to 2 thirds, we get 537. 480, 499, 540. And there is noise in the data, so that at these different um, uh, positions along the uh, uh, profile. We're coming up with different estimates of z. So I think you can kind of see the utility of taking multiple uh, estimates of z from multiple diagnostic positions and taking an average in order to get uh, an estimate of z. You know, in fact, for this anomaly, uh, it was generated using a depth of 500 meters. You can see before, even with a noise-free data set, I think we came up with, uh, I don't know, 480 or something like that. So uh, noise is going to complicate your analysis. Um, next time, uh, we're going to interpret uh, Gmax and show how we can use this parameter in this equation in order to get additional information about the feature of interest, the geologic feature that's producing the anomaly that we're seeing in our da data that we think could be associated with a uh, localized, um, roughly spherically symmetric uh, distribution of density contrast. So that would be on tap for uh, for next time. Uh, hope you join me then.